I continue to be Brian Vickery, Director of Products at Crossref, as I've been for the last hour. Um, and um, this is the third of our sessions um, today, practice-based arts research and the PID landscape. Um, so as you know, many discussions are already underway in this area. Um, however, I've heard that they're you know, quite UK Europe-centric, so PID of Palooza is a great uh, venue for us to hear today a more global perspective from some of you and i know the speakers are looking forward to that um we've got adam uh, viles moore from jisk uh, jenny evans from the university of westminster and taylor mudd here from haplo so um i have dropped uh, a question into ask a question which is where is adam's menti and then below that you'll see some links to the menti poll that they're going to use and i've taken up two minutes of time so i'm just going to hand straight over to you guys hello everyone um okay so i'm just going to kick off uh because it's pitapalooza um we've got a playlist hope you've all been enjoying the spotify playlist we um we had a like big debate about where we were going to be um as far as music wise i had some great kind of like dub trance that was kind of um on the back of this, you can go and find it in Spotify. But at the minute, um, gratefully, my um, slide is over where my people are. Um, anyway, so we're going to go through a couple of getting to know you all bits on Menti. So if you go to menti.com or click on that link, um, at the minute, it should be showing um, the title. So give us a heart. Um, we're basically trying to build the start of community engagement around about the international practice-based research. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Jenny talk about researcher and research support perspective um, after we find out a little bit about you. We're going to have Taylor talk about the technical perspective. Um, and then I'm going to, I can't see that bit, but I'm going to talk about kind of the venue for our voices. OK, so this is where I now hope that Menti likes me. Uh, here's an application window. There we go. So, <clears throat> you guys can all see that, right? Give us a give us a sign. Fab. So it should now say, "I come from." So let's find out where you all are. Brian, can you switch the? Thanks. So far, so far, we've got nine Europeans. Morning, after ooh, wait, afternoon now, twelve or four. Ten Europeans. It's a little bit slow as well. So I'm watching this on my iPad while I'm controlling it on my Mac. Um, okay, so we've got lots of Europeans. Anyone from anywhere else at the minute? Not that's got Menti open. Okay, so currently the people are going to own up to being, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it might be a bit off for global perspectives right now. <laughs> so this, this will help inform the rest of our talk, 13 <laughs> Europeans. Okay. Hello, Europeans. Well, I think what we're going to say is we've got some Europeans here. It's been a, it's been a long old, it's been a long old thing. Right, go to the next slide. Where are you all? Got some others. You want to stick that in the chat? That would be great. Um, given the session, um, I'm imagining there'll be three or four BLs. Okay, I see I'm going to eat in time here, so I'm just going to go on a little bit. What's your job? Now, um, I think we've covered most things that most people do who come to Pidapalooza. Um, but you know, you might have another fascinating role which isn't covered here. 
course. It's Pitapalooza, isn't it? Hello, archivists. Yay. <laughs> That's good. I think we've got archivists and librarians, which, you know, might be the most. Oh, come on. It's just a party, <laughs> isn't it? I love that. It's a yeah. European other party. <laughs> <laughs> what have we missed? I need oh, to do that. I don't know. We spent a lot of time looking at stuff that we might. Oh dear! Right, <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. You know when we went over all of the um, things that we looked at from previous outputs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I think the last one is the thing that we're really interested in. To be honest, give us. <laughs> well, my job description. Rachel, if you remember, was about 12 <laughs> words long. So. Yes, totally with you there, Rachel. Um, if you could give us a couple of words or a very short, because you know what Menti's like, um, on what currently practice-based research means to you. That would be really helpful. You're in the right place then. Amazing. That's good to hear. Yep. Remember, there's no such thing as a wrong answer. Um, never said my maths teacher. This is clearly yeah. challenging people, Adam, this question. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, my parents took my PhD thesis and they weighed it and they said, ooh, that's a lot of words. Um, <laughs> search for this a creative output. Interesting. A lot of, a lot of practice based research in dentistry. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay um, right. Eight minutes passed. Uh, user experience. Thank you so much. That looks like, is that enough for you to work with, Jenny? Uh, <laughs> 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 yes, no, no, and absolutely. And I think I can, I'll pick up a few of those elements um, in my presentation. Um, so great. Thank you all for your inputs. I think um, I'm very aware we've, we've, We've been in a lot of conversations across the UK over the last couple of years and some more international, but we really do want to um, to broaden out this discussion. Uh, but we're getting to Europe at least today. So we're, we're moving slightly beyond the UK, although I'm sure we have quite a few UK uh, participants here today. So, oh, I'm just apologies. I'm gone through my entire presentation in the space of a few minutes. Okay, so you've all got my slides up, aren't you? It's just, I've got two windows going on, so I can't see any of the chat at the moment. So, um, Brian, can you switch the focus back to, that's it, perfect. Yeah, Thank great. You. Thank you. So do um, interject uh, if I miss a question uh, that someone wants to answer or wants to ask. So practice-based arts research, I've gone way too many far. So what I'm actually going to start with is two things. So first of all, just to point out, I do completely understand, as do we all, that practice based research goes beyond the arts. Uh, so I know I'm very aware that it goes on in education and in, in health uh, and in other areas. So this kind of conversation today is really focused on their arts uh, and architecture research, although we're not discounting those other areas. And there may be useful input from people today uh, that's relevant uh, to more than the arts. Uh, I'm picking up from the university perspective. Uh, the University of Westminster is based in London. Uh, we cover a broad range of disciplines. I think that's really important um, because often arts researchers may work in a specialist arts institution. So they're in, in a slightly different place, although we have kind of common challenges. Uh, so I'm going to start with a definition from our uh, research lead in our Centre for Research and Education in the Arts and Media, uh, Neil White. Uh, he's a professor of arts and science, so he comes from very interesting backgrounds. Uh, he contributed to a panel session we ran at Open Repositories uh, almost two years ago. So whether it's practice-based, practice-led, artistic research, research is research. Whatever method, data, it's the processes that underpin the practice. Uh, that it's the data you're working with and the documentation we're thinking about. And for me, I think practice-based research 
in the arts and, and other is, is really about bringing together what we talk about uh, in the sector around not only open access, but also research data management uh, at the same time. So I think key elements uh, of, of this research are that it's dynamic and it's a changing body of work. So it's not often simply about publishing uh, a single journal article. Uh, these are also unique outputs. I think that's something we all care quite a lot about. Uh, they're not necessarily captured elsewhere. So if we don't capture this research, how do we look after it and preserve it and maintain access to it? Uh, intellectual property rights and copyright uh, are a huge challenge. It's not always possible to make uh, or share an entire output. Uh, an artist or a photographer might sell images um, of their work, which is part of their livelihoods. Uh, a film might be owned by a recording or a film studio, for example. So, so it's it. I guess we have to be a little bit pragmatic about how open we can make this research. Um, I find it very interesting being responsible for University Open Access Press as well. Um, and having worked in the past with uh, a very science-based institution is, is how different the conversation is around the open access, open research um, and, and the creative arts, because it is it is very different. I think then they're, they're just in a very different place, but also there might be a different end, end goal uh, for this group. So what did we do at Westminster? We had the opportunity to develop a new repository uh, using the Hatflow repository software uh, and we kind of found out of quite a few things in the process of developing this repository uh, that actually repository software, understandably, focused uh, traditionally on uh, text based research outputs and data. Uh, and I think it's worth mentioning that often those are put in two different places. So they might be in a, an outputs repository or a data repository. Uh, and as a consequence, they're different communities uh, kind of supporting this research, which for practice researchers is problematic because really their research is, is a real combination of, of outputs and data. Uh, as a consequence, the community haven't seen their research reflected in the landscape. Uh, this was the case at Westminster, but I know it wasn't, it's not only a Westminster issue. Uh, they didn't really see how their research fitted into our repository. So they're a bit like, well, number one, do you want it? And number two, do you care about it? So I think that's a really important thing to think about. Um, Something Taylor will be talking a bit more about is uh, what we've also discovered is that the standards don't reflect this research. Uh, there's a lot of reference to other uh, as an output type. Uh, and, you know, there's challenges in, in how customized and, and configured we make our standards. But um, but yeah, it's very at the moment, it's very hard to sell ORCID uh, to some of our practice based researchers because they're like, well, you know, that doesn't really look like my research does. Uh, I've mentioned the IP and copyright challenges as well. Uh, ethical implications on, on what can be shared from the research. So I think that data management perspective comes in there. Uh, I think a really good example is the Journal of Artistic Research. Uh, I will um, share some links when I've stopped speaking uh, so people can look at this stuff. Um, but the Journal of Artistic Research uh, talks about exhibitions uh, and multimedia and text. Uh, going back to the licensing issue, they actually use a CCBY NCND license. Uh, so they're very happy to share and make open the content. Uh, what's up for question is, is that idea of reusing or enabling reuse of the content. Uh, so I think the only other thing to say actually is vocabulary and language is really important, which is what we were able to, to do some work on with our repository development and form and aesthetics matter how things look. Uh, and I think we'd all agree that a lot of traditional repository software doesn't look very nice. It's very, it's very kind of like old school texty, um, not very user friendly. Um, <coughs> Inference, sorry. <laughs> so moving on. Uh, Briefly from that, I, I'm aware time's moving on. Um, what did we do? We were able to create three sort of like really focused templates. Uh, so the idea of an item template, an exhibition template, and a portfolio template. Uh, because we had the repository technology of Haplow, we were able to do things like make the author creator, uh, reflect collaborators, um, talking about standards, again, credits, and I know there's work to be done there. It doesn't really, ref it's a very STEM focused uh, taxonomy. Uh, using description rather than creators. Uh, the idea of a commissioning body, not just a publisher. While we might assume that, well, yeah, course one equals the other for our, our researchers, that's not obvious. Uh, and the idea of having file level access so that some records can be closed, uh, having media type within, uh, the output records uh, and also just being able to change some of our text based output templates so that there's an option for exhibition catalog under the book template. So they're small things, but to our practice researchers, they matter. 
Uh, and what do we end up with finally is our idea of a dynamic portfolio record. I think that's the other thing to remember is that this research is changing all the time. It's not a one off kind of like this is this is uh, the research full stop, like perhaps a journal article might be. Uh, so what we had on the I have on the right there is that our portfolio record brings together individual items. So we have our individual item output records uh, and then we bring them together in a portfolio records. Uh, so I think that's pretty much all I've got to say, really, that's an example. I'll share some links of uh, some of what I've said. Actually, probably the other thing I did miss is just a quick note about the funding landscape. Um, researchers in this area don't necessarily get specific funding council bids in the UK at any rate. So they don't actually have that funder mandates um, initiative, I guess, that other disciplines do. So I think that's also a tricky thing. Uh, to, to come to terms with and, and Daria EU did put together quite a good response to the Plan S consultation around around how how you, it, it was unhelpful for these researchers because if they weren't getting grants from big research councils then they, they weren't they didn't have an, an impetus uh, to make their research open. So on that note that's me the institutional and research perspective I hope uh, and now I think it's back to Adam for some mentee questions and I can start looking at the chat. Thanks Jenny. Yeah I think um just following up on that about the funding one of the things that we've certainly found when we've discussed about bringing other PIDs into this landscape is clearly being able to define a benefit rather than having a hard mandate really the way forward it, it's about showing how efficiencies um and like making things more available make, improving discovery those kind of things really matter to this community things like providing a way to bundle stuff together. So RAID really makes a difference because being able to capture a narrative is important when there's bits and pieces of money coming in, when there are lots of people involved at various stages, that, that kind of thing's important. So um, just from, uh, before we talk about technical stuff, what kind of technical stuff do you guys have? So what we're kind of looking for in this, back to Menti, um, Still seems to be working. Five people have answered. Thank you. Uh, 86, 90, 13, 9. The link is in the ask a question. Uh, just one minute on this because we're pushing a bit for time. Thank you for all those. We've got some Figshare, ePrints, some Vera, custom elements, shockingly haplo. Well done. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyone want to stick in what the other is into chat? That'd be great. Don't think I've seen a lot of Jupiter um, in practice based. Um, but it's, a, it's an interesting idea. OK, I think um, the last bit of this is have you customized? If you have access to actually customization, or are you aware of? customization to capture practice based? I know at least one person here to the answer is yes, so I'm confident that we'll have more than one. OK, I'll give it a second to catch up. Okay, guys. Um, Taylor, are you ready to go? Yeah. Try to speed through this a little bit quickly. I know we're rich. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's fine, Rachel. Can you swap back to the slides, please, Brian? Or do I need to stop sharing? Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, got it. All right. So. Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, so yes, I'm Taylor. I'm the lead developer at Hackflow Services for the open source repository software. Uh, I'd like to spend some time going through the technical challenges for PIDs in the practice-based arts research. So I believe these technical challenges are symptoms of a broader problem, which is just that researchers in these areas don't have enough of a voice in the conversations that drive the technical standards. 
So this means that the schemas for describing research and the infrastructure that supports them, I intentionally exclude their research from being archived, harvested, cited, shared and discovered, which firstly is just a massive shame and secondly it's just plain unfair. So these, the integrations for generating PIDs are very text-based research oriented. For example, we're minting a DOI. So you get so much interoperability for free with the DOI. However, often practice-based arts research just won't meet the mandatory criteria to mint one. So the publisher field is mandated by the data site schema to mint a DOI and often practice-based research work isn't formally published especially in the arts. So this leads to ambiguity with what to do with this field. So can a DOI just not be minted or should some other value take its place? If so, which value? Uh, I suspect there's a solution to this issue, but we've not been able to find any clear and well disseminated guidance to point towards it. Uh, there's also a requirement for a uh, public landing page for a DOI to resolve to. So often this type of work needs to be deposited with closed access. And as a result at the moment, just can't benefit from the sharing potential of having a DOI for the record. So I do see solutions to both of these issues. So relaxing, either relaxing the requirement for the publisher field or having clearer guidance on how to handle it for work that isn't formally published, as well as allowing a DOI to resolve to an access form for an output would allow for better sharing of practice-based research. Um, I'm just gonna to touch on one second point, Jen, if you switch, flip to the next slide, sorry. So there has been some conflation between the terms the output and single file across multiple schemas. Since practice-based research is more likely to be made up of multiple files, this confusion hinders interoperability. So for example, this quote here is out of the REOC schema specification, and it states that the key points out of this are that the resource refers to the electronic copy of a publication, and that it's, it's sorry, the electronic copy of a publication, that's the main point I'm get, getting to here. So. What if the item isn't a publication or there are multiple files which make up the overall research? So for example, an exhibition which consists of multiple images or videos. So again, there's no clear guidance on the best way to handle that within the REOC schema. So if there's no way to include it in the schema, it won't make it to other repositories. And if it won't make it to other repositories, it won't be visible in the world. And at that point, does it even really count? So I believe there's probably a running theme with these issues whereby there's likely a correct and valid way to handle them. However, there's no clear guidance to that effect. Now, I did have one more point about credit, but I know we're pressed for time. So I think I'll just hand over to Adam and I'm happy to answer any questions about that in the Slack afterwards. Hello, thank you very much. Um, okay, so the last two bits on the Menti are basically what PIDs have you heard of before? Because I know it's Pidapalooza, but we'd expected to have quite a mixed audience of practice-based researchers and people who, um, who are doing PIDs. So I'm gonna guess that quite a few people have heard of everything on this slide. So I'm gonna give you all a second to look at this. I'm gonna share my screen again, um, but I've got like one second left. Uh, so uh, there's me and there's my thing. Um, Can we have the mentee up again? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Here we go. Right, so you should be able to see that, Brad. Can you just bring that to the four? So um, while it's coming up, I'll just quickly make the point that Taylor was going to make. One of the issues that we have with practice-based research and, and other things like that, and something that we talked about at the ORCID UK meeting in last summer was other. So we get a lot of work coming through as other. And I know that um, data sites been working on this in their vocabulary, and we had a chat about this as well. Um, and that's something that we really need to start looking at is about better ways of having taxonomies of describing work in general and what we actually get on this stuff, right? Um, so yeah, not surprisingly, um, things are thing, but ORCIDs and ISSNs and DOIs seem to be a thing less on org IDs. I'm really pleased that like project IDs and rates are so high um, in this audience. Um, but I would be really interested in um, this last one. What persistent identifiers do you use or issue? And while um, we're talking about that and filling that one in, I will just quickly do my slides as well. So what I wanted to talk about is the way that we move forwards with 
a way to have a community around practice-based research and look at some of the issues that we've been discussing in this session. Um, where we look at where the venues already exist, um, where we look at starting to form our own space and how we go about that. So let's have one last look at this. Uh, DOIs, yep, ORCIDs, yep, some ROARs, ISSNs. Again, if you want to start letting me know what others are in the chat or in Slack afterwards, that's great. No one's using a RAID. Lots of people heard of them. No one's using them. That chimes somewhat, because there's no Aussies here, are there? So it chimes somewhat. Well, no Aussies uh, are based in the in. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one, in, no Aussies in Menti anyway. Okay, can you can you whack the slides up for one last minute, please, Brian? Yeah. Okay. So, cheers. So, so what do we do? Um, okay. It, let me just grab it. So we need to make um, practice-based research and especially kind of the artsy things more visible. Um, so we've got stuff like this uh, taxonomy of author contribution. Credit, credit's great, but it's really stemmy, just from where it came from. Uh, we need to feed into that. Uh, uh, I'll plug somebody else's conference. Um, Alice will be happy. So NISA Plus is coming up um, and there's, um, a way to you know start feeding into that. There's data site groups, um, RDA, ORCID work types. Um, just plug straight on. Um, we've got um, at JISC the research um, identifier national coordinating committee. That's coming up as a national level group. Uh, at JISC we're committed to drink our own champagne. I will not say that phrase. Um, and we're looking at also the wider research community at a national level. Um, we've got other national consortia. Um, you know, there's the ARTC. They may have talked about this kind of thing earlier. I believe there's a federation, an alliance. There's something that needs a name, you know, working on a national consensus. We need that kind of international perspective to bring together the needs of this group. And we're moving on again. And we're moving on again. I don't know why the animation's in. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> try again. Oh, blimey. Okay. Okay. I, I, you keep talking. I'll keep trying. I'll keep talking. Um, and so the last thing is that we need to form a proper community of practice. Um, there you go. And so, uh, you know, I've been involved in the UK Orca Consortium for a while. We bring to bring these kind of community of practice um, strengths to the research-based community and to this kind of national formation. Focus on the needs, gather, amplify, coordinate, and ensure content. So in the final slide, we talk about how we do that. So we get in touch with us. We're going to try and focus on Twitter at the moment, now that there's no orange munchkin drowning everyone else out. Um, use a hashtag. Um, and then we've set up these two accounts to kind of broadcast. We also have ah, an expression of interest, which I've not managed to put the right link in, but it is available in the chat. There you go. That's one last thing. Uh, there you go. So um, there is bit.ly slash PR voices, which has a Google Doc on it, which you can sign up um, if, you know, in these days of PD, GDPR um, and so on. Uh, you might uh, still want to do that, or you can ping us on Slack um, or tweet us, send us a DM. Okay, thank you very much. Right on top. Well done. Thank you, Adam. Right on time. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Johnny. That was um, really interesting to, to hear about that work. Um, we are right up against time, and I know that some people want to go to some of the sessions. Um, so thank you for your, oh, everyone's gone. It's just us. <laughs> <There's anyone. laughs> wow. They that was great. Literally, literally legged it. So it's just <laughs> yes. um, It must be an automatic thing. I can't believe I left that bitly off the slide. I just I just can't believe I couldn't get in. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although I guess we're still recording the session <laughs> until I press the button. I was going to ask a question about dynamic portfolio records. Um, yeah. 
it, in the journal publishing world which I came from, um, you know, having a version of record which had a citable DOI was kind of sacrosanct, right? And um, so in the world where, oh yeah, they did get kicked out. Um, in a world where the, the record can be dynamic, um, what do you do about citability of that, um, that item? I think I think it's a good question. I think um, I know that there's some work that's been done by DataSite on versioning DOIs, and and that's one element. But I think it part of it is about what changes in and and Taylor, correct me if I'm or Adam, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think even in, if you version a DOI, you, there's certain fields you can't change, which mm -hmm. is where it yep. becomes a bit of a problem. And and I did um, I did accost some data site colleagues at Open Repositories year before last about this. And I think part of the problem has been trying to articulate this, but also to to kind of demonstrate a body of research that, that can be looked at. And I, I'm hoping with our research excellence framework exercise in the UK this year, that what will come out of that is a body of content we can work with, hopefully some, if not all of it in repositories. So I think trying to articulate how what it is to kind of fix it is is problematic i think because you've got the kind of item level records that they they could potentially have a doi um mm. but yeah it's that how you how you maintain integrity while recognizing that for this community it needs to be um that that is dyna dynamism dynamism not quite sure what the word is but that dynamic <laughs> element is um yeah is, is really important and yeah and how how do we make them up because the danger in the uk is that you, we've got a practice research community or some of the community who are who are now asking for different sets of like they've talked about their own web of arts and and the problem is, uh, is which and i agree completely adam that's that's my reaction too but, but they're still mentioning it because they they think they want something different but equivalent to what the, the STEM subjects have. So so it's about how do we how do we we get them on board that actually we don't need to create all new things. We just need to work with what we've got. And and as Taylor sort of mentioned, um, update documentation and make it clearer. Um, but and one, the other thing I didn't mention too is that we had a session at Repository Fringe a couple of years ago where, you know, I'm really grateful we're in a position to work with really great repository software, but not all uh, universities are so actually so that the other software out there that doesn't i'm not saying not some some repository software does capture this stuff but but the repository and chris software that doesn't they need a standard to work with before they can they can kind of include the right field so for quite a big part of the community who don't have access to the more up-to-date sort of flexible software like they're missing out at the moment so and also particularly because arts institutions are often quite small mm. um, they don't have the funding to go out and build and and buy a single repository so they're often in a, a collaboration or, or an uh, agreement with other universities so yeah so i think it's yes yeah. so i'm not sure if i answered your question there but um <laughs> it's, it's I mean, not... yeah I, th I think another answer to that question is um hmm. I mean, I'm not I try not to blow the trumpet too much. The, 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 one of the answers to the question is Ray, right? So yeah. there's there's the project as um, a whole, as a bucket for these things, right? And so that's a persistent identifier to the thing that is the narrative for the stuff that is going on, that is dynamic and changing and underneath it all. But one of the reasons for Raid existing is to do that is to provide a point um, that you can reference and say this is the work that is ongoing and yeah. underneath that all is all of the other stuff right is the outputs is the people involved is the bits of money that are coming and going and all of that stuff so the project as a whole is identifiable by the raid and then everything underneath that, yeah, yeah 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 great um uh, formally, because we're still on video, I will thank the speakers today for uh, for their contribution. <laughs> thank you, Adam. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Um, and I will now close the session. So have a good rest of Pitta Palooza if you're here. Oh, thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.